Hello, Accounting 203 students. This is Professor Hassey. We begin week two of our summer online study of financial and managerial accounting. This week is June 8th, 12th to the 18th. Today's date is Tuesday, June 13th, 2023. And I'm speaking to you live and in color from Claremont, California. This week, we're going to be finishing up our definition of accounting and also beginning the a discussion and review of business transactions, recording business events in the language of accounting. And that concentrates on chapters two, three, and four. We'll probably get through chapters two and three through our final video of this week on the, in our weekend update video. Also, you have an assignment due this week. It's on chapter one, the definitions of, of accounting. And then another assignment next week, which will cover the material that we're gonna be reviewing this week and next chapters two, three, and four due on June 25th. Also, you have your professor and student interviews this week. Some of you have yet to sign up for those uh, interviews. Please do so. This is a graded assignment to make sure uh, uh, we get to know each other and get up to speed of any questions you have about our course. Please go to the student discussion forum right here and sign up for our session by opening up a folder, picking one of the available dates and times. We have Tuesday evening and Thursday after Thursday as our only remaining times left for this study. Uh, if, you, uh, if you cannot meet on Tuesday or Thursday, uh, let me know and perhaps we can get together with a, another time this weekend. But it's important that you do meet with me this week. In the assignments file folder is our first assignment, Introduction to Accounting. I've given you two file formats, a PDF and a Word doc version. You select and download whichever one you prefer. Do all your work on the document, uh, and then you just open up the file folder and upload the assignment so I can review it. And then I'll send it back to you to your grade center once I complete the grading process. This work this week represents 5% of your course grade. It concerns itself with uh, definitions of accounting. Here is that assignment number one. It's uh, three questions, uh, mainly concerning itself with the definitions and the prob problem we looked at in week number one. Uh, define uh, what is an income statement, statement of owner's equity, balance sheet, and statement of cash throw flow here. Uh, tell me what is the ending balance of equity in the Mason Company by this information here and also match up the, the key definition in terms of accounting with this problem here. Pretty short and sweet. Do all your work on this file and upload it to Blackboard. If you have any questions about this, please let me know. If you go to week two of our Blackboard, you'll see the information for this week. There's our agenda that I just talked about or just showed you. Here's our learning assignments for this week. We're going up to chapter three. We have a weekend update video posted on Friday and you have your assignment number one due on the 18th, that's Sunday. Here are some review files for all three chapters, two, three, and four, and some problems that we will look at. Here's the accounting cycle. These are chapters two, three, and four, and this is what you have to master in the next couple of weeks, each one of these steps in the accounting cycle. And then some videos explaining business transactions, debits and credits. Remember, accounting is a language. It's taking business events and putting it into a transaction to show that and keep a record of that to provide and prepare financial statements to let the public and let the company know how they did, how they did. And that's what we're talking about this these next couple of weeks of our classes, understanding this cycle. eight steps 
that every company in mankind and womankind have to prepare on a monthly, quarterly, annual basis. They have to record a business transaction in a journal entry. They have to post that entry to what is called a general ledger. They prepare a trial balance of the general ledger balances. Then they do adjusting journal entries. Then they prepare another trial balance after those adjustments. Then they prepare the financial statements, income statement, statement of owner's equity and balance sheet. And then they close the books, closing all the temporary accounts. And then they prepare one last trial balance of the accounts that remain. Ladies and gentlemen, this is done every friggin' month in every friggin' business in the world. If you don't do this, if you're a public corporation, you're breaking the law. If you're a private corporation, you're not gonna get any Shark Tank funding, I'll tell you. You're not gonna get any funding from any hedge funds or, or venture capitalists because you're not going by generally accepted accounting principles. That's the rule. You're not gonna be a legitimate business unless you do these things. Because why? People think you're a crook. Matter of fact, some companies do this and they're still crooks. That's why we have public auditors, independent auditors to check this. But for our class, Accounting 203, finance, the first section of financial accounting, this is what you need to know. And this is the first four chapters of our text and the first three weeks of our studies this summer. If you want to be a business administration major, if you want to go on to get an MBA or a master's degree, if you want to run a department or run a business or have some position of strategy and control in a company, if you don't know these eight steps, you're up the creek. It ain't going to happen. Even though if you're in marketing or if you're in finance, you don't actually do these eight transactions. But if you don't know these are going on in your company and what they tell you, you're still up the creek. So that's why this is huge. All right. So please spend time these first two weeks, especially this weekend. This is what the quiz is talking about this week. It's making sure you begin to understand. This quiz number one is only on the first three steps. Record the business event, post to a ledger, and prepare a trial balance. That is on your worksheet that I provided you for this quiz. Quiz number two is doing the remaining four through eight. And that will study and practice that over the next two weeks. Your midterm examination is going to be one company doing so this is something to your starting point in your review for this week. Then I have the PowerPoints from the chapter. I have solutions to these problems that you can review and look at from the chapter. Remember, we're using the 24th edition. Where is it here? I got it right here. We're using the 24th edition fundamental accounting principles. If you have that text, again, you, you don't need it. If you, if you don't want it, you don't, you don't want it. But if you have that text, look at those review problems. They act as wonderful templates for the quizzes and the midterm because everything's done on your own at home. So you get a problem on quiz number one. You go, what the hell is Hassie talking about here? I don't know what's going on. You have to go to the textbook to find it. It's take all these questions are taken right out of the textbook. You're going to have to do some research. So that's the key to directed study. Okay, that's a pretty good infrastructure review of where we are, where this stuff is, what you got to do. All right, let's take a look at a problem that kind of talks about this. We talked about this in our opening video. This is problem 17A, where it lists on the top the accounting equation. Assets equals liabilities plus equity. 
We talked about that last week. And then it lists all the, ca all the accounts, cash, receivable, equipment, payable, capital, withdrawals, revenues, and expenses. Now, this is not an accounting transaction. This is not what you're doing in part three of quiz number one. But what it's trying to do is show you how this kind of all works. This is what chapter one is all about. Kind of show you what we're doing here. And remember one of the key things I talked about last week is that you have to understand that this is a new language. It's a language that you have to take business events and convert them into a language of accounting that shows things. Every event, if you notice, every date here has at least two things happening. Two things to every business event. Now, some things happen on one side of the equation, but every transaction in business has two events going on. That's number one. And number two, the biggest hassle for first time accounting students is say, well, what the hell? I, I don't know which accounts to use. What, what account do I put these in? Well, that information will always be given to you. You don't have to figure that one out. If you were an accounting major, you would have to figure that out. But you're not an accounting major. That's why you're taking this class. So you, I will provide you all the accounts. Now, your textbook on page 34 has this problem. And the very first transaction, it says, and this is one of the biggest hassles of the first week of studies of accounting. You have to take an English sentence and transfer it into accounting language. G. Graham invested $40,000 cash in the company. Well, G. Graham is the owner of the business. So he's investing cash and equity called capital in the business. He's setting up the business. Cash increase, equity increase. The company rented furnished office, rented a furnished office and paid $2,200 cash for the rent in May. So they rented office space for 2,200 bucks. They wrote a check, notice here, minus cash, 2,200, and then minus equity expense, 2,200. Equity is being reduced because money is leaving the business for expenses called rent. Notice we're lowering cash and we're paying the landlord. The company purchased $1,890 of office equipment on credit, and this goes back, which I was just taking a few minutes ago. On credit means accounts payable. We're buying office equipment, increasing office equipment. At the same time, we now owe $1,890, which we have to pay in 30 days. When you use that credit card this, today at lunch hour to buy your lunch, you did the exact same thing. You now owe that amount of that lunch and that lunch would be considered an expense for you, lunch. But you now have 30 days to pay that credit card. Credit cards are just like accounts payable. You have to pay them off in a certain amount of time. If you don't, you gotta pay a late fee or interest or both. The company paid $750 cash for this month's cleaning services. Again, cash is being reduced and we're paying an expense called cleaning. Notice money is going out and equity is going out called an expense. Well, now equity is coming in on May 8th. The company provided consulting services for a client and collected $5,400 of cash. They deposit that cash in their bank account, increase, and they now have received increases of equity called revenue, $5,400. Money coming in, revenue, 
money going out expense. Here comes another type of revenue. The company provided $2,500 of consulting services on credit for a client. On credit, they owe you the money. And that's where we have another asset account called accounts receivable. And it's still revenue. This is one of the things that students have to understand. It can be revenue for cash. It can be revenue on credit. It's still revenue. You provided a service. Here, they're paying you right away. Here, they're paying you in 30 days. Damn. After a while, this stuff kind of looks cool, especially after about three beers. All right, May 15th. The company paid $750 cash for a salary of an assistant for the first month, half of the month. So now they're paying payroll. $750 going out, $750 going out called salary expense and so on through the rest of the month. Now, Walmart or any business does not keep their books this way. They use debits and credits in journal entries. Debit cash, credit capital. Debit expense, rent, credit cash. Debit office equipment, credit payable. Debit cleaning services, credit cash. That's what we're doing in chapter two. That's a journal entry. But this format is to have you, the student, first time seeing this, can get a feel for how this all flows. Remember, a debit is the left hand side of an account, the credit is a right hand side of the account. It means nothing else. Debits increase cash, credits reduce cash or assets. Debits reduce equity expenses, credits increase equity. Left hand and right hand side. We're gonna talk about that in just a minute as well. So take a look at this problem 17A just to get a feel for the transactions. And then once all those transactions are done in May, you have the totals, $42,780 of cash. That's how much money should be in your checking account. You have $1,970 of office equipment. You still owe 80 bucks on accounts payable. The owner has invested $40,000 in the business. The owner has taken out $1,400 of withdrawals from the business. <clears throat> you had $11,100 of revenues and $5,030 of expenses. Add all these up, the assets will equal the liabilities and equity. You're in balance. And then you tell the world what happened by doing the financial statement. <laughs> right here. Notice the income statement, a statement of revenues and expenses right here, $11,100 of revenues oh, and $5,030 of expenses. The Graham company made $6,070 in the month of May. They had a good month. The statement of owner's equity. They started out the month of May with zero. The owner invested $40,000. The owner made a net income of $6,070, the difference between revenues and expenses. And the owner withdrew $1,400 out of the business. So the owner's equity at the end of the May was 44,670. Investment, profits, withdrawals. And then this 44,670 is now part of the balance sheet, the equity balance of the company, where you have your assets, cash, 42,780, office furniture, 1970, 
we have assets of $44,750. Our liabilities, what we owed, we still owe 80 bucks accounts payable. And we have the 44,670 of equity. And golly Gomer, it's balanced. In a very so small and simple version, we just completed the accounting cycle. We recorded the business events according to accounting principles of assets equals liabilities and equity. We recorded those in a financial statement that tells the world, hey, we made a profit. The owner of this business has $44,670 of equity. They have $44,750 of assets that they own. And the good part of that is 42,780 is in their bank account. And there's their balance sheet. This leads us into chapter two, where we record these in the terms of a journal entry. And what does that mean? Let's take a look at that. Mr. Hassey, I'm sure glad you're recording this. What is an account? Cash account, capital account, <coughs> expense account, revenue account. An account is a record of increases and decreases in a specific activity, asset, liability, equity, revenue, expense. The general ledger is a record of all accounts used by the company. You have all your asset accounts, your liability accounts, your equity accounts. They all have to be in balance. There's examples of your assets. Examples of li liability accounts, things that you owe examples of equity accounts. You always have to make sure these are in balance after every transaction. So here's a company's chart of accounts. It lists all the accounts that they use in their business. And now they're going to record the transactions or activities of these accounts by either debiting, which is the left-hand side of the account, or crediting the right-hand side of the account. This is huge. If you have your textbook, rip this page out and keep it. This is the basis by which we're doing the accounting cycle. Remember, we have to say assets always equal liabilities and equity. How do we record these events? We debit assets to increase them. We credit assets to decrease them. And it's vice versa on the other side of the equation. Debits decrease liabilities. Credits increase liabilities. Debits decrease equity, which are expense accounts and withdrawals and credits increase equity, which are owner's investments and revenues. If you keep this simple phrase or this simple dialogue, you'll be able to sort all this out if you're get, looking at transactions to record. This is huge. Take a picture of it, rip it out of your textbook, write it down, whatever. This is paramount to understanding. And one of the biggest problems, I probably shouldn't say this, but it'll confuse students by me saying this probably, but don't think of your checking account statement that you get from Wells Fargo every month online or they mail it to you is the way of understanding debits and credits. Because remember, the bank statement from Wells Fargo is a statement for Wells Fargo, not for you. So where it says credits at Wells Fargo, those are really debits for you. Remember, if you, if you increase your bank account, they credit it. 
but really that's a debit, you're increasing cash <laughs> because bank accounts are liabilities for them. Customers are putting money into their account. They now owe that money back to the customer in whatever services or checking services they have. So if you try to, con try to understand debits and credits by looking at your bank statement, you're gonna get yourself confused because it's the, uh, they're doing it for them, not for you. So you have to take a look from it from this perspective. So again, here's another, this is called double entry accounting. For every business event, two things happen. And notice all the things that could go on in the equity account. Owner investment, owner withdrawals, money coming in for revenues, money going out for expenses. The normal transactions are debit expenses, credit revenues, debit withdrawals, credit capital. Credit liabilities, when you borrow money, it's a credit. When money's coming in or you're buying assets, it's a debit. Study these until your eyeballs fall out. It makes everything a lot easier to understand. Here's a, a general ledger for a cash account. These are all the cash account, cash transaction during a period of time. Some occurred on the left-hand side, cash coming in. Some occurred on the right-hand side, cash going out, credits. The balance in the account at the end of the period is the difference between the debit totals, 36,100, and the credit totals, 31,300. The difference then, cash has a $4,800 debit balance, which is a good thing. If it had a credit balance, that means you're overdrawn. <laughs> a debit balance means, oh, we got $4,800 in our checking account. And now when we get our bank statement, we can verify that when we reconcile the bank account. Oh, okay. Every event, something's going on. And this is what I was talking about, journalizing transactions. This is a general journal entry where the owner invests $30,000 in the business. Debit cash, credit capital. The date, the account, the amount. We purchase supplies for cash. Debit supplies, credit cash. We now own at, we're converting one asset cash into another asset supplies. Here's the general ledger account for those transactions. Cash coming in, there's the balance. Cash going out, there's the balance. This is a general ledger. So when you record a transaction, it is immediately posted to the ledger. I rec this is the general journal. You have to do this in quiz number one. You record the transaction and then you take those, account those amounts and post them to the debit side of cash and to the credit side of capital. You're now posting those to the ledger. And then when you're done with your ledger, and this is part of my video over the weekend, so I'm gonna skip through this. You'll see this over the weekend. When you're done with this ledger, then you prepare a trial balance. You take all the balances in your ledger and list them. What are the debit balances? What are the credit balances? And whew, they equal. All this tells you is that your accounting equation is in balance. And you can go further on into your business. This is like a quick check. I remember uh, a couple months ago, I saw the uh, chief accountant at University of Laverne. I said, hey, uh, how you doing? She goes, oh, it's a bad day. I go, let me guess, your trial balance is not balancing. How'd you know? I teach accounting. And when an accountant is really upset, it means that something's wrong in their books. And I know, we gotta go through all our transactions to make, we posted something wrong. It's not balancing. Yep, tell me about it. I know what you mean. 
trial balance is a quick check to make sure that you've done everything properly. And that is key. Remember, in accounting, just like in any other business activity, you're always accountable on a daily basis. You screw up, you can fix it. But if you keep screwing up and don't fix it, it gets a lot worse. The trial balance helps you from screwing up. It corrects. It makes sure you correct something before it gets even bad worse. So those are the key parts of our quiz. Definitions and these three events, journal entry, general ledger posting, trial balance. And I'm gonna give a sample problem in my video this weekend, which is problem 2-1A, which the problem is already posted in the Blackboard, that, you, that gives a perfect example of this process. Problem 2-1A and my video this weekend will be going over that. So we have an assignment number one uh, for this week, which is basically the definitions of uh, chapter one. And in the video that I just showed you, <clears throat> that was a replay of a, of a video in a class a couple of months ago. The only difference is I keep talking about quiz number one. Uh, you do not have quiz number one or any quizzes in this class. It's all assignments. In assignment two, you'll be doing those journal entries and trial balance that I mentioned in that video. But for this week, as far as assignments are concerned, this three question assignment is due on Sunday, June 18th, and it's basically about definitions of accounting and equity and understanding the basics. And then next week in assignment two, we'll go over some, you'll be posting some actual journal entries, trial balance, and that sort of thing. So uh, in my review or my weekend video this coming Friday, I will go over questions questions from review problems from chapter two, which begin this process of journal entries and understanding them. But for now, this is a good start to understand the uh, definitions of accounting and being able to move forward into the into these next few weeks of understanding the accounting cycle. So that's our introduction and lecture for week two. We will have a follow-up video this Friday, which goes over more questions and problems from chapters two and three. And you have an assignment one this week from uh, chapter one, which goes over the definitions and our discussions of last week. Next week, you'll have assignment two, which will go over the problems of this week and next to complete the accounting cycle. Remember to sign up for a professor student interview this week. I look forward to talking with you all and answering your questions or concerns about the course. Uh, please do so because remember, this is a graded assignment. So it looks like I'll probably see the balance of our 203 class probably on Thursday of this week. So thanks, everybody. Have a great week. Uh, any questions or concerns about assignment one, please let me know. Have a great week, and we'll see you on the weekend with our weekend update video. Until then, adios.